am so excited that I'm going to be able to make one of my favorite dishes in the autumn, and that is stuffed acorn squash. This is an acorn squash, just in case you didn't know. And we're going to cut it in half and stuff it. But the first part of it, when we cut it, you can either do that in a microwave or you can do that in a conventional oven. That's your decision. I kind of like the second part done in a regular oven, but again, that can be done in a microwave. So whatever, however you want to make that happen is perfectly fine, but we're going to be making ours in our oven. Your equipment, a pan, a spoon, measuring spoons, a big knife to cut the squash, small knife to chop all the stuff, measuring spoons, and some foil. Here are your ingredients. Acorn squash, apple, walnuts chopped, fresh cranberries. You can use dried basil, but I had a little... Uh, fresh basil outside, so I'm using that. You can also use dried sage, but I had some fresh sage. And mushroom, onion, maple syrup, or you can use agave nectar, doesn't matter whichever one you've got. And tempeh, a little tamari sauce or some liquid aminos, and tarragon. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is turn on the oven. There's nothing worse than getting your whole thing together and you go to put it in the oven and the oven is absolutely frozen cold. We're going to start by cutting this in half and for that I need my big knife. Now we scoop out the insides. Just take a spoon and scoop out oops <laughs> Scoop out the uh, the seeds. This part of my acorn squash has this little end on it, so I'm just going to cut that off. And what that's going to do is make this flat so it'll sit up just perfectly. I'm ready to put this in the oven because I already turned it on and it's hot. But I'm going to put water in this. I'm going to put enough water for about an inch because this is actually just going to steam. This is when you can also put it in your microwave. If you have a big enough microwave you can put it in there for 10 to 15 minutes. I just took these out of the oven and they're pretty well cooked. They need a little bit more cooking which is great because then I'm going to stuff them with um, our stuffing and then I'm going to put them in the oven and they'll completely bake all the way through. All right, I'm just finishing up getting my ingredients together. So here's my apple to put together my stuffing. I'm going to start with my tempeh and then onions, mushrooms, and I'm going to hang on to these a little bit, the, um, the walnuts, just because I'm going to see how much room I have in the squash. One of them will have more room than the other one, it's just that's the way it works. This is my, uh, my uh, tamari. And a little bit of maple syrup, just kind of sweeten it up, and sweeten up those cranberries. But it's very tart, so if you really like things sweet, you're going to need more uh, maple syrup. But just, you know, try it without it first. And this is just my basil and sage and the other, and tarragon. Mmm, smells so good. There's nothing like fresh herbs. And now I'm just going to stir these up and get them mixed. I'm also going to make some of that cashew dressing that was our first recipe. Um, I'm going to try it without the cashew dressing and then, I'm, then I'll decide if I want a little bit of cashew dressing on top. But for those of you who are goop people, that cashew dressing is a really nice, like a tablespoon on top, just adds a little bit of um, liquid that you may need. Now I'm going to stuff the squash. Be careful. 
the squash are going to be hot. I've worked in kitchens and I've dealt with so much food that I have asbestos fingers. Doesn't that look pretty? And you can just take whatever leftover stuffing you have and put it in its own little container and stick it in the oven. There we go. Uh, I have a, a one of those silicon sheets here. I'm going to be using it. I'm a little goofy when it comes to foil and food. So I think foil can be really great. I don't have really a good tight lid that I would like to have on this. So I think foil is great. I just don't really like foil touching the actual food. So I'm using the silicone. You see I have a little bit left over here. And so this is in a, an oven uh, proof dish and so I'm going to fold this up you see so it doesn't touch the food it's above it and uh, and I'm going to let this bake I think that means they're done I'm going to check them and you know that the inside is done when the cranberries are cracked so let's take a look the cranberries are just about to crack, but they haven't. So this isn't done yet. I'm going to put it in for probably five minutes. Can you see that these are beginning to crack? You can pierce them if you want, if there's a couple of ones that are a little annoying and won't do it for you. But the cranberries are starting to crack, which means the stuff inside is cooked. And you see how this is really easy to pierce? And the apples are kind of done. They're a little bit still crunchy. I like the stuff a little crunchy still. Um, and so let's just let this sit for a minute because it's a little hot. Mmm, let me try this. Mmm. Mmm, that little tart. Oh, those cranberries are a little tart. And I really like it. Oh, yeah, mmm. <laughs> and the squash. Mmm, really good. Just mmm. Melts in your mouth. Oh, yum. I don't think I'm going to need the cranberry, the, the cashew cream right now. This is just really good all together. But if you should, you know, if you're a goop person, try without first. And then if you need a little bit of something, put that cashew cream on. But only put a very little bit on. Otherwise, you'll start killing the flavors of the cranberry and everything else. Oh, it's nice and tart. Mm, yum.